Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So transformation is the process in which a piece of DNA is introduced into host bacteria. So when a small piece of DNA, which is nothing but the foreign DNA, when this is introduced into a host bacterium, so another bacteria which acts as the host. So this process is called transformation. Why is it called transformation? Because due to the insertion or due to the introduction of the foreign DNA, the host bacteria might undergo some sort of change. And this sort of change is known as transformation. So that is why it is called transformation. So what happens exactly in a transformation now, whenever this process happens, that is, whenever a piece of foreign DNA is introduced into a host bacterium, what can happen? So, it can result in one of the three cases. So, one of these three outputs can happen when a piece of DNA is introduced into host bacterium. So, number one is non-transformed. That means there is no no transformation takes place so even though the dna has been introduced but there was no change which was undergone by the host so the host remains non transformed so there was no transformation which had taken place so that is one possibility the second possibility could be transformed with non recombinant vector that means it got transformed it underwent certain change but with non recombinant vector but there was no recombinant vector so there was no recombination which took place now when we say that non recombinant vector so what is recombinant vector recombinant vector is that vector which contains the gene of interest because you remember recombinant vector is nothing but the plasmid dna that is the vector dna along with the foreign gene which contains the gene of interest so one option is it gets transformed, that is the host cell gets transformed with non-recombinant vector. That means the vector doesn't have the gene of interest. And the third option is it gets transformed with recombinant vector. That means the vector has the gene of interest. So here you see non-transformed. Why? Because it, it, it doesn't undergo any change at all. Transformed with non-recombinant vector. So you have the vector in red, but it is non-recombinant. So it did not recombine or it did not combine with the foreign piece of DNA. And the third option is it gets transformed. That means it undergoes a change with the recombinant vector. So the vector here also has the is the recombinant DNA that means it has that foreign piece of DNA. So these are the three possible colonies that can be formed as a result of the process of transformation. So when the foreign DNA is introduced into the host cell. So these three things can happen. Now the question is when you do it experimentally, what happens is all of them are grown all together. So how do we distinguish between those which have transformed and those which have not been transformed? So those which have not been transformed are called non-transformants. Those who have transformed are called transformants. So how do we distinguish between the transformants and the non-transformants? Now in order to separate them, we make use of antibiotics because the behavior of each of them in presence of antibiotic is quite different. So that is where we see that the presence of selectable markers play a very important role. Now what do we do? We allow all of them to grow in antibiotic medium. So when all of them are allowed to grow in antibiotic medium, what happens? By default, this bacteria, the host bacteria by default does not have resistance against the antibiotic. So if you ask this bacteria to grow in antibiotic, what will happen? This bacteria will not be able to grow. So this will die or it cannot grow we can say that because it is not resistance to against antibiotics so this will not be able to grow the second one now the second one has transformed so the second one will be able to grow what about the third one third one has also transformed so the third one will also be able to grow now the question is why is the second one and third one able to grow it is able to grow because now these two host bacterium have has inside them the 
vector and as we saw in the previous slides that these vectors have certain regions which are resistant to antibiotics so once this vector enters inside a host cell it provides resistance to the entire host cell so now since you have this particular um, vector inside the host so due to the presence of this vector which is resistance against antibiotic now again Please remember that this vector will be resistance against certain specific antibiotic. For example, let us assume that this vector is PBR322. So in that case, this will be resistance again, this will have resistance against two antibiotics. And what are those two antibiotics? Ampicillin and tetracycline. So if you grow this host cell in ampicillin medium, it will be able to grow. If you grow it in tetracycline medium, it will be able to grow. But if you try to grow it in some other antibiotic medium, it will not be able to grow because it doesn't have resistance against that antibiotic. So we can say that this will be able to grow in a medium containing ampicillin or tetracycline because PBR322 has resistance against both of them and here we see that PBR322 is unaltered it has not undergone any change so that resistance is intact so this will be able to grow in both ampicillin medium as well as tetracycline medium now let us come to the third one which has transformed with recombinant vector so what happens in this case in this case this will also be able to grow because this also has the vector which has resistance against ampicillin and tetracycline but there is a small change here. In this case, we see that some portion of the vector DNA was cut and it was replaced with the foreign DNA, right? And that is how the recombinant DNA was formed. Now, when some portion got replaced, what happened was that that particular site which was resistant to one of the antibiotic that got replaced with this foreign DNA. Therefore, what happens? This one will be able to grow in one of the two antibiotic medium. That means it will be able to grow either in ampicillin medium or in tetracycline medium depending on where the gene of interest has been linked to the vector. So if the gene of interest has linked to the vector in that area where the ampicillin resistant genes were located, so in that case the ampicillin resistance has been destroyed. If the gene of interest is located in that site which was resist which contained the genes resistant to tetracycline, in that case the resistance to tetracycline is spoiled. But in any of the cases, it is sure that if a, a foreign gene has come and linked to the uh, BBR322, that means either tetracycline or ampicillin resistance is being spoiled. So now this particular host will be able to grow either in ampicillin medium or tetracycline medium. So looking at the behavior of the host bacterium in the antibiotic medium, we will be able to conclude which one is non-transformant, which one is transformant with non-recombinant vector and which one is transformant with recombinant vector. And how does it help? It helps us to because we are only interested in which one? We are interested in this one, the transformant with recombinant vector because that helps us in the process of genetic engineering. So our focus is on the third one. So in order to understand how many of them has been transformed transformed with recombinant vector, the presence of selectable markers help because had selectable markers not been present on the vector in that case you will not be able to understand which colonies were transformed and which colonies were not. So this is all about the process of transformation and this tells you how significant the presence of selectable marker is. And that is why it is said that for any vector which, which has to act as a cloning vector, it is very important that it should have proper origin of replication with high copy number. It is important that it has specific restriction sites or recognition sequences. It is important that it should have selectable markers. So I hope the concept of selectable marker is clear. 
So now we will talk about a small topic that is again related to selectable marker called insertional inactivation. So the name sounds little complex but the concept is pretty simple if you have understood the concept of selectable markers. So we will understand the concept of insertional inactivation by taking example of a specific restriction endonuclease enzyme. So let us take the example of the same cloning vector that is PBR322 because by now you have got some idea about PBR322. You know that this is where its origin of replication lies. It has uh, antibiotic resistant genes against ampicillin and tetracycline and their sites are located here. We also know that it has restriction sites for different restriction enzymes like BAM, HI, ECO-RI and PBU2, PST1, PVU1 etc. So let us take the example of the enzyme BAM H1 in this case. Now where is the restriction site for BAM H1? Somewhere here. So somewhere here is the restriction site that is the recognition sequence for BAM H1 is located somewhere here. Now whenever BAM H1 comes in contact with uh, PBR322 it tries to locate its recognition sequence and it sees that okay its recognition sequence is located somewhere here. So what will it do? It gets activated and it cuts the DNA somewhere here. So this is how BAM H1 will cut the DNA. So some space is created for the foreign piece of DNA or the alien DNA. So now what will happen? The foreign piece of DNA, let us suppose this is the foreign piece of DNA. So this foreign piece of DNA will get linked to this circular DNA. That is this circular DNA is nothing but the plasmid DNA or the vector. So the foreign piece of DNA will link with the vector DNA at the same location. So but which is this one? This was the foreign piece of DNA. Now as soon as the foreign DNA links with this uh, vector what is formed? Recombinant DNA is being formed. Till this point it is clear. Now how the foreign piece of DNA gets linked to this one? With the help of DNA ligase enzyme which acts as a glue to stick the foreign piece of DNA to this vector DNA. But now, did you observe one thing? The tetracycline resistant gene is being replaced by the foreign DNA. Due to the foreign DNA, the recombinant plasmid lost the tetracycline resistant gene. So the gene which used to provide resistance against the antibiotic tetracycline, that gene is lost. We do not have that gene. Instead of that, we have the foreign gene. Right? So that means this recombinant DNA which is formed now, this recombinant DNA does not have resistance against, so no resistance against tetracycline. That's because that place or that position is being occupied by the foreign DNA. But what about the ampicillin resistance gene? The ampicillin resistance gene is still there but the tetracycline resistance gene got inactivated due to the insertion of the foreign DNA. That is why the name insertional inactivation because the antibiotic resistance gene gets inactivated due to insertion of the foreign DNA. So here what do we see? So this kind of a vector or this kind of a recombinant DNA when it enters inside a host cell what will happen? That cell will be able to grow in an ampicillin medium. So it will grow in ampicillin medium because it still has resistance against ampicillin. So this will be able to grow in ampicillin medium but it will not grow in tetracycline medium. And looking at this feature only, we are able to distinguish between the transformants with recombinant DNA and transformants without recombinant, right? So this is how we are able to distinguish between the transformants and non-transformants. So what do we learn from this? That one, there are two antibiotic resistance gene or two uh, 
selectable markers which are present in PBR322. So one of them that is one antibiotic resistance gene helps to select transformants that is AMP in this case because if you grow, up, grow the transformants in AMP the transformants some of them will be able to grow in it, some of them will not be able to grow in it. So that means AMP will tell you whether it is a transformant or it is a non-transformant. So one antibiotic gene will help you in doing that. Whereas the other antibiotic gene gets inactivated due to insertion of foreign DNA. Here you can see that is tetracycline. So the tetracycline resistance gets lost because that particular gene gets replaced with the foreign DNA. So this this is known as insertional inactivation because one selectable marker gets inactivated due to insertion of foreign DNA. So this is the entire concept of selectable marker as well as insertional inactivation. So please if you have not understood this please recap the last two three slides but get this concept clear. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.